regards to the welfare state. There's a new form of democracy, you might say, that's emerging here at the Occupy Wall Street events. It's a form of collective decision making in which everyone's voice is valued and everyone is given a chance to speak without speaking too much. It's very impressive. And it means that decisions can take a long time, but they're very powerful because they represent the will of many, many people simultaneously. We're here with one of the press organizers who understands a lot about this. He's been here for, since day one. Can you tell me? How, does, how do decisions get made? How are ideas formed in this very diverse group? So we use a decision-making process in which what's called consensus. And what consensus is, is that anyone, either that individual or a working group, can come up with an idea or a proposal. And they put the proposal forward to the group at our general assembly large meetings. And what happens then is that people go through a round of a structured conversation where after the proposal, first people ask what's called clarifying questions, where they get a clear idea of what the proposal means. Once the round of clarifying questions is over, people put forward concerns. And after the round of concerns, the proposal makers are allowed to make what's called friendly amendments, which they shift the wording of the proposal so that includes people's clarifying questions and concerns. A new proposal is then brought to the table, and the same round is repeated until um, it, the, that round is over, and then people will see if they consent upon it. And when consensus supplements, it means that everybody agrees to it. It's, it's I mean, I so that. real, we're right. looking right to face it. And we're trying to deny it, avoid it. And the good thing about consensus is it's not necessarily the decision that everybody wants and their favorite decision, but it's a decision that everybody is satisfied with and everybody's happy so, with. So it goes to the Quakers, and the Quakers have been using consensus yes. for years and years and years. Quaker letters. Yeah, so these are this is like an old, these are old concepts. These aren't new ideas, but we are trying to use them in our work because we feel they're very valuable ideas. So it can come to a decision or it can come to, is it perhaps possible to come to no decision? It is, it is possible to come to no decision in which somebody puts forward, an individual puts forward something called a block, which means that I am so Show against... Show me your hands on that. A block, which means I am so against this proposal, I'm so against this idea, that if this goes through, I'm leaving the group, I'm leaving the movement. And this is a very serious decision, and people are not supposed to take this lightly. And the idea behind blocks is that um, people will try to make the friendly amendments to make the proposal work, but if if there's an individual in the collective that wants to block it, then maybe that's not the right decision that needs to go through. So is it is it true then that every person potentially has a veto power over the entire group? And how is action taken in the presence of um, individuals that are not in alignment? How do you move forward, I guess? That's a really great question, because what we have is a modified consensus. So if we do come to a situation where there's a block, then we go to a percentage vote. So if We've gone through, we've made their modified proposal, friendly amendments, gone through the whole process of consensus and there's still a block, then we'll go to a 90% vote. Where if 90% of the people at the General Assembly agree to the idea, then it will still pass. So this is a way of just like, of um, the really minority voices that may be you know, trying to disrupt our movement um, are left out, but we still include the majority of the people making a decision.